Hello there. Well, we are in the beginning of the quarter of duality. Today, the sun enters the seventh gate, the gate of the role of the self, and it is the gate uh, that belongs to the cross of the Sphinx, which is the first gate of the quarter of duality. So we are going to have three months, approximately three months of a lot of <laughs> bonding, sexuality, and relationship business in the air. We can't avoid it. So let's dive to it with understanding. <laughs> so first of all, if we look at the quarter of duality, we can see that um, we have three defined channels in this, in this quarter. So these are three channels that are about relationship, about bonding. Uh, everybody, the, everyone who was born on, on this uh, quarter that his personality son is on this quarter these people um, the purpose is fulfilled through uh, bonding and we have to understand it because we are not talking about fulfillment through what we call bonding what we see as relationship and bonding in the world in the homogenized world we are talking about fulfilling ourselves through being ourselves in bonding and the bonding is the, the main tool for these people to get to self-love, to get to self-recognition, um, self-fulfillment, uh, being oneself, um, knowing oneself, yes, everybody according to one's design, but um, it's not about the other, it's about how am I in this relationship? How am I growing, maturing in this relationship? How do I respect myself and mature and evolve in, in this bond? And it's, of course, not only about intimate bonds, but you know that um, uh, it's a lot about uh, men and women and a lot about... Um, uh, intimate relationships, not only men and women, it could be two women or two men, but it's a lot about intimacy. We can see the channel of intimacy that also leads to making children and families. And we see the channel of exploration, um, sorry, the channel of discovery, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that it's about discovering myself through this experience of relationship. And of course, the channel of the abstract the mind that looks back on the relationships and try to understand what was going on there. <laughs> so this is um, interesting things about uh, this duality quarter. Also, we see that all the gates of the spleen are defined and that shows us that a relationship is a lot about security and a lot about fears. And of course, in the not self, this is what leads to the attachments to um, relationships which are not correct. And when we leave ourselves, things change in this realm. Um, we also see that the, the love gate from the vessel, the love gate in this quarter is the 46th gate, the gate of the love of the body. So of course, we, we, when we learn to love ourselves, one of the aspects of self-love is love of the body and it um, let's say that this love of the body reflects in the best way through bonding through intimate sexual or physical bonding so we can see this also and we see that we have a few logical gates we see that the gate of formalization in the ajna wants to give logical answers and patterns about relationships and <laughs> we have um of course, the gate, gate seven, we will talk about it soon because this is the first gate uh, that is about the role of the self in interaction. And then we see uh, two gates from the stream of taste. We see the 18th gate that <laughs> criticizes everything according to mom or dad. And of course, the 48th gate, gate who, uh, which gives um, practical solutions about relationships. <laughs> So we have a lot of um, interesting stuff that we will go through in this three months. And of course, a lot about sexuality and intimacy. 
interesting thing that we see about the quarter of duality that the, the opposite of, of it is the quarter of initiation, which is fulfillment through mind. And it just showed me this interesting um, duality. <laughs> uh, we can see the not-self relationship that everything is ruled by the mind and that's why they look like they do. And when we shift into the correct way of bonding of the nine centered being, so this is a lot about the, the mind as outer authority, the mind as inspiration, not a tool of control and manipulation. So when we live as two different individual beings that just have a bond and we are not immersed, we're not, we're not sucked by the bond, then our mind is not controlling and manipulating, but giving inspiration and the friendship is coming out of the personality crystals. Well, we have a way to go and this is amazing. So, the sun is in the seventh gate, the earth is in the thirteenth gate, and let's look at all the other gates that are now in the transits, which are part of um, the, the quarter of duality. We see the moon is in the gate of confusion, the node, one of the nodes, is in the gate of confusion, then we have Mercury in the fortieth gate, the gate of aloneness, we have... Um, Venus in the, the, in the abysmal, and we have, of course, Jupiter that just entered the sixth gate. So all of these gates are part of this uh, quarter of duality, and it's interesting to see how we have this welcoming, <laughs> welcome party. We have the channel of uh, the community. We will talk about it soon. And the two gates that are in the sun and the earth are two collective role gates in interaction with the other. Very interesting. And also, I um, want to congratulate people from the cross of the Sphinx with the seventh gate in the sun. Uh, happy birthday this week. And also, people of the juxtaposition uh, of interaction, juxtaposition cross of interaction and, and left angle cross of masks, all of these uh, <laughs> direction, which is actually about love. It's part of love. Love and direction are two parts of the G center of our inner GPS. So we have direction, we have interaction, and we have masks. All of these are parts of the culture of duality. The seventh gate, the gate of the role of the self, uh, it's interesting because this is actually, it's a logic gate and it, it means that if the quarter of duality begins with a logic gate, then we know, and, and it's a gate of direction, then we know that logic wants to give logical answers uh, and direct us, direct us in the correct uh, logical direction of building um, uh, the collective out of bonding. Bonding is part to a part of um, creating the tribes and, of course, the collective. So we have six archetypes. It's a role gate, yes. Six archetypes of um, of roles of interactions, <laughs> interaction with the, with the other. So the first line is the authoritarian. That's the way the first line um, communicates. He, 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 they sound, they sound and appear very authoritarian when we when they have the strong foundation. The second line is the democrat. The third line is the anarchist. Of course, third line. Uh, then the fourth line is the abdicator. The fifth line, of course, is the general. And the sixth line is the administrator. So these are the six archetypes of the role of the self in interaction. And then we have the 13th gate, which is also a role gate, and this is about the listening. This is the gate of listening, the gate of secrets. Uh, it's part of the channel of the witness. We saw it just uh, the last week. We talked about the the other gate, the, the, the harmonic gate of the 13th, which is the gate of retreat, and they together they form the channel of the witness. So this is the this is the the, the, the listener 
Yes, so we, then we have the voice that says, I remember. But this is uh, the listener, and, and as a listener, we have uh, six archetypes, again, according to these, to the 13th, six lines, we have the role uh, of the listener in the profiles. So the first line is empathy, the second line is bigotry, <laughs> you just don't want to listen. <laughs> the third line is a pessimist, of course, after, after all the trial and error and the bonds made and broken, so they listen, but they are very pessimistic while they're listening. listening. The fourth line gets really tired out of listening. The fifth line gets projected on while he listens that he's going to save. And the sixth line is the optimist after being pe pessimist and, obje and, and learning objectivity on the roof, then he gets down and he's an optimist. So here we have these um, two uh, roll gates that we can just go over every day and see the energy shifts and changes. It's really, really interesting to watch. So I'm, I invite you to, <laughs> to have fun with it. And of course, if we're talking about relationships, then they, it's, there are, there are the, the times that we externalize and there are times that we listen and we can see if that affects us. Of course, all the people with the open G, that they have um, the 10th gate that connects now to Mars uh, in, in the sacral or, or the 31 or the 33 in the, in the throat center, then their G would light up, they would feel love and direction, and they would feel these two roll gates. So let's see how, what, what adventures we are going to have. And we see that the channel of community is um, making a welcome, welcome party to, to this uh, quarter of duality. Uh, this channel is really interesting because of course that it is part of the cross of planning and we have it as a background frequency for 400 years. And that's why we, we treat relationships as something which is a bargain, something which is a deal, it's a, it's a contract, it, it's um, very sticky, very tribal, and this kind of relationship is really uh, problematic because, of course, it doesn't suit almost no one. <laughs> and even people that carry it, and I can speak for myself, I carry this channel and I, I'm not, I don't do any more <laughs> relationships like this. This is not correct, and we are stuck in it. So, of course, the cross of planning is um, shattering, and also the marriage uh, institute, as we can say, but still people are looking for this. This is such a deep um, conditioning. We can't, we can't avoid seeing ourselves wanting to be in this, uh, in this family, in this sticky um, bargain, and, and, and create what is expected of us out of our intimacy. So, and we, are, and we can see how the talk will be, um, this is Mercury in the 40th gate, the talk will be about uh, aloneness or not in the relationship. And of course, Neptune is in the gate of the family and we have Jupiter in the sixth gate. So we have this global conditioning pattern. Um, this, this channel is also about tribal spirituality and we can feel this too, the, the, the part that want to be touched by God and of course uh, in, in, in sexuality and intimacy we're talking about touch. These are three tribal gates that form this channel and, and the half and they are rooted in touch. So this is and all the people that don't have any of these are going to feel it. So beware, <laughs> beware and enjoy. Sometimes it's really nice. Um, the moon is going to remind us that we just said goodbye to the channel of abstract, but it's going to come back again for a short time, for a few hours. And this is of course another channel that is part of the, of the, um, duality business of the relationship business so uh, we will 
uh, be immersed in all this um, channel of community business and intimacy business and we can have a lot of realizations about it. <laughs> Very interesting. And <clears throat> then uh, Venus is going to get into the um, gate of <laughs> sexuality, the 59th gate. So we are going to have a global conditioning pattern of the channel of community, the channel of intimacy with three other aspects of uh, in the sacral, yes, of <laughs> sexuality. We are going to be very, very busy in, <laughs> in experiencing detailed sexuality that can lead to a marriage bond. So, <laughs> so please notice that this is just a global conditioning patterns for a few hours or days and um, we can just um, watch it and enjoy it or watch it and stay out of it according to our strategy and authority and of course <laughs> and of course the mind still <laughs> in the business of checking all this um, relationship business so this is very nice um, and then the oppression will change to friction the, the moon will will dive into the sixth gate so we Again, strategy and authority, otherwise babies are coming. In the 7th of August, we have uh, the moon in the 57th gate, the gate of, the, of intuition. And this intuition is uh, connected to the sacral in the channel of power, a design of an archetype. And this configuration <laughs> will be asking, is this intimacy healthy for me? Will I survive it? <laughs> and of course, even though the spleen would, be, uh, would condition us globally, beware because the channel of intimacy needs waiting. It needs emotional clarity. Don't jump into anything, please. <laughs> Wait for clarity. And then if it's healthy, <laughs> then go on. <laughs> And then the moon will be in, um, in, gate, in the gate of duration, the 32nd gate in the spleen, and will um, connect with the Marian maiden in the channel of transformation, a design of being driven. So here we can be driven to transform our intimacy. <laughs> And again, we can be very busy. By the way, uh, Mars, which is in the in the gate of, uh, the, of the gate of mind, the gate of power, uh, the thirty fourth gate, is about. Um, it's not available for sex only when the genetic imperative needs to be to make babies. So <laughs> this could be we, we are not available for sex or we are very, very busy in <laughs> in sex and in and we want to we, we have a lot of ambition for that and <laughs> and of course we are experimenting and ex we are experiencing yes the the 42nd gate we want to bring things for an to an end so let's do it and have a family. <laughs> And the ninth gate is getting into little details in this, in sexuality. So, and then, um, and then for the, the end of this transit week, also going to be with the channel of community. Uh, this time Venus is going to get, enter the, the gate of aloneness. And again, we have this, um, uh, interesting and delicate balance between being alone and being in the bond and being intimate in the bond and being intimate with ourselves. Um, so this will be for a few days as long as Venus is there. So this is our beginning of the duality quarter. Uh, we know that the cross of planning is breaking down and the channel of community which is uh, conditioning us very, very strongly for a few hundred years is breaking down and we can feel it in every aspect of the cross of planning, but of course in relationship. We can see how the traditional bond is breaking. Um, people are looking for alternative, creating alternatives. Um, the bond with God is breaking, the bond with the marriage is breaking. 
and we are entering into a new era of the nine centers uh, relationship and of course not no humanity is not going this direction we know but those people who meet human design and live according to their strategy and authority their homogenized relationship can't stay the same they break down um, we can see it every everyone knows everybody who really dives into the experiment knows what, what I'm talking about and in the new relationships that we form or that are being formed out of this um, respect for our design we can see that the main issues that can lead to healthy and respectful relationships is of course respecting our type and strategy and the other ones type and strategy and of course we have our inner authority and we don't have mutual decisions this is something that disappears and it's a concept that is very difficult for the mind to accept because we are so deep in this bond in this sticky bond of the tribe that everything is is for everyone and there is one way of doing things and suddenly no mutual decisions everybody everyone has his own inner authority uh, and energetic respect this when i say that i mean respect the time frame of the other respect the need the different needs of sleeping patterns between um types and so on sexual differences no agenda <laughs> when two people meet and they really leave their design they, they can't there can't be an agenda because we only have the moment the auric connection between these two people what happens between their personality crystals um what happens between their bodies and it all depends we as we know on what's happening in the transits or what happening if the timing is correct what's happening in every each of, of each of the people's um, process, individual process, so they can't, there can't be no agenda. Two people meet and that's it, two people meet. And every relationship is so different, it's so different than the other. Um, we can't compare, we, which, which um, with every one we are different because the connectivity is different so we can even we can't even say i'm like this and this when i'm in relationship because it, it varies so we have our we have our um basic design and in the way it operates but we change according to each relationship so this is very beautiful and of course the only anchor that we have is strategy and authority to stay who we are in this relationship and this is very very beautiful and of course when this is a correct relationship the the connectivity or the bond the bond between the passengers the two uh, personality crystals is so beautiful it's not about controlling it's not about changing the other it's about being inspired and supported and empowered according to one's design and that's it so each of us can have many relationship many relationships that each one is different and can give and contribute what it needs to to give us in this moment of our lives so this is really really beautiful and what i want to remind you i'm just meeting people i'm working with people and i see it over and over again the people enter the human design experiment and they are radical and they sleep alone and it's amazing and then somebody enters their life cupid cupid just shoots an arrow and then for one minute they forget the whole thing and they they sleep with the other and they stay too much and they just don't respect the inner authority enough and the whole thing starts to feel very bad and and the whole and, and I, I just want to encourage you and remind you that sleeping alone is so 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 important. And even if the beginning in the beginning there's this attraction and all this um, feeling of you know 
the cheese glowing and, and, and you just want to be with this person, remember that all the, all the old patterns are very seductive. We can just fall into the old patterns very, very quickly. So please be um, generous with yourself. And even if you're very much in love, sleep alone. And of course, if you're a non-energy type and you are dealing with a generator, please remember this is about your body, about your health. And, and in the end, it affects the relationship. So nothing good can really come out of it. So, yes, I know sometimes I'm being the Grinch, but <laughs> I have this gate in my Chiron. <laughs> but I don't want to, I don't want to, um, to uh, darken your enthusiasm about new loves and attraction. I know what it is, but please remember sleeping alone is, the, the, and is another part of this holy trinity. And it is a holy trinity. We, got, we have our strategy. We have our inner authority, and we have sleeping alone. And you know, Russ said, and I'm, I see it in my life so clearly, that a relationship that we don't get into correctly wouldn't be correct. So please don't initiate if, you don't, if you're not a manifester. Wait if you're uh, emotional. Wait for your clarity. Remember that that in general relationships are emotional so we need time in intimacy time in creating intimacy and creating the bond and respect yourself and from this self-love and self-respect that you show your design then this is the place to get out to a new bond so have a beautiful and full of romantic and tribal and sexuality <laughs> bonding, sexual bonding, and we'll meet again. Bye.